In today's video, I want to talk about why I stopped listing on Facebook Marketplace and why you probably should too. If you sell on Facebook Marketplace, and you also want to continue to do so, or if you plan to in the future at all, this video is extremely important, so watch it all the way through. Last year, Facebook Marketplace dropshipping was hands down the largest stream of income in my business. It was beyond easy to list products up and make sales. Now, this year, my sales have been down a lot from last year due to having my main Facebook account disabled for intellectual property infringement. This happened around the end of July, and at that time, my dropshipping business was averaging pretty close to around $20,000 profit every single month. The largest portions of that were all managed by my main Facebook profile. It was mainly two shops at the time, as well as the personal marketplace that was linked to my account. However, when I received my second intellectual property claim that was tied to that personal account, it resulted in losing all of them with no hope of getting them back. And believe me, I literally tried everything. Also, both claims happened on shops, but because my personal profile was the profile that was responsible for listing on these shops, that profile was the one that got disabled. And that's key. We'll talk about why here in a second. So as unfortunate as that was, I was able to actually kind of pivot and get some other Facebook accounts to begin to scale back up, which I actually did pretty successfully. I currently have a Facebook profile that's pretty successful on personal marketplace, as well as a few new shops that are also doing pretty decent too. So why then would I stop listing on Facebook marketplace? And why am I warning you about doing so as well? Well, a few weeks ago, I got another notification on this new account. And this was the first one on this new account. And it came again from another shop that I listed to from it. And since I know from past experience that it only takes one more two in total to get that account permanently disabled, I don't want to mess around with it anymore. It seems like this is becoming a larger and larger issue on marketplace and on shops as more and more sellers begin to sell here. I've received countless messages and comments since I released the last video on my main account getting permanently disabled. And both of the videos that I created on how to contact support after you have an issue have received a lot of interest as well. So I know it's starting to affect more and more sellers. Unfortunately, at the current time period right now, Facebook marketplace policies on how to deal with these types of issues are elementary elementary at best. And their support, as I'm sure you know, is laughable for sellers. That means it's extremely easy for people to file these copyright and these intellectual property claims on Facebook, but it's extremely hard for you and I to fight them. And that's assuming that you can even get a hold of somebody at Facebook that's an actual person and not a bot. Now, to be fair, on the latest one I received, Facebook at least told me who the claiming party was, gave me a way to contact them, and gave me a link that I could appeal through, which was not the case for the beginning beginning first two. On the previous account and the first two, it literally just said, hey, you've been hit with an intellectual property right strike with no other information, no information about the seller that was filing the complaint and no link to appeal at all. So I have to figure that they're at least attempting to improve the appeals process going forward. I mean, all other major platforms have systems in place so that if you do receive a strike like this, you can at the very least appeal it and you can get information on the complaining party if you do wanna escalate it like legally further than that if you want. Now, every platform is different of course, but Etsy has one, Amazon has one, eBay has one and the list goes on and on. So because the easiest way to scale a dropshipping business on marketplace is to list lots of products, but now it seems like every single time you list an item on personal marketplace or on shops, you run the risk of getting a copyright or an intellectual property strike. And that obviously increases the likelihood of you losing your account permanently. I now recommend going a different route. Lately, I stopped listing on Facebook marketplace altogether from my accounts. And as always in any business, you need to learn how to pivot and adapt with any obstacles that might arise. So instead of you listing directly to shops via your personal account, I recommend that you instead hire a VA and then give them access to listing on your shops. You can do this easily by going to settings and then permissions and then inviting a new user on the top right and then only giving them permission to list on your shop. Just make sure that that's the only box that's checked. And this way you're not 
not risking your account if an issue comes up with a specific product. But you can still list lots of products, which is the quickest and easiest way that you can scale retail drop shipping on any of these websites. And you can hire someone super cheap on a site like onlinejobs.ph for as little as $2 or $1.50 an hour even. I'll make sure to link onlinejobs.ph down in the description if you want to check it out. So it's extremely profitable to hire someone from there to list on your shop at that price point. And that is how I recommend that you approach it going forward so you can continue to scale your drop shipping stores on Facebook, but also protect your account long term. Now, as far as personal marketplace, because you can't hire somebody and give them access to listing there, if you do want to continue listing there as well, I'd simply recommend staying away from eBay listings that have brand names in the title or eBay listings that have brand names burned into the images that you copy over. It seems like a large majority of these issues are coming from claims from eBay sellers on new eBay listings where both or at least one of those is the case. So I really hope this video helps. As always, I want to be completely transparent with you about what's going on in my own dropshipping business so you can potentially learn from both the successes and the failures as well. This business is not always sunshine and rainbows. Just like any business, there's going to be some hurdles that you have to jump over. But in my opinion, that is always a good thing because you know if you're able to leap those hurdles, there will be a lot less competition on the other side of them. So as always, if you got any value from today's video whatsoever, please give it a like. I genuinely appreciate it. Until next time.